Hello, high school hockey fans. It's time for another edition of This Week in Wisconsin Prep Hockey. I'm Mike Hammett. I got my astute colleagues along with me, Bill Berg, Dull Scanlon, and Bill Berg Jr. We'll call them the know-it-alls because that's just what they are compared to me. All right, games of the week. Dell, you know all there is to know about Pines girls taking on Black River Falls. Tell us all about it. Thanks, MJ. Well, this was the second meeting of the season between uh, the Eagles and the Tigers. Uh, first game, the Tigers won it 8-4. to four. This game started out re really tight in the first period. Uh, Black River Falls was able to score on a power play. And then Taylor Heleniak picked up two goals for Northland Pines, and Pines led 2-1 to one at the end of the first period. Uh, Black River Falls answered strong in the second period, scoring four straight goals to end up with a 5-2 to two lead, followed by Northland Pines scoring a goal with about a minute and a half remaining in the second period on the power play to make it 5-3 to three Black River Falls after two periods. And then in the third period, it was, you know, Pretty tight, but Black River Falls outscored Northland Pines three to one in the third to win the game eight to four. The one thing about this game was is there was a lot of penalties in it. Uh, six penalties on Black River Falls, five penalties for Northland Pines, and each team was able to get one power play goal out of it. Uh, Magnuson had a very good game in net. Well, not she stopped. 32 out of the 36 shots she faced for 889 save percentage. And I'm probably going to butcher Jenna's last name if I try it. Urine, Urine, uh, had played for 44 and a half minutes. And then Jayla Zadnik played the last six and a half in the game. Uh, but Black River Falls came out with a second eight to four victory over Northland Pines. Uh, again this season and that's about what I got for the girls game of the week uh, anybody got some questions on it I can try and answer them otherwise I'll toss it on over uh, for the boys game of the week thanks Dell uh, boys game of the week I don't know if we've ever had Tomahawk as a game of the week before but uh, Tomahawk at Lakeland, uh, unbeaten atop the Great Northern Conference standings on Thursday, uh, three and zero in the conference, tied with Wapaka at three and zero. Uh, Wapaka had beaten Mosini earlier in the day, so Tomahawk and Lakeland were playing to keep pace at the top of the uh, the conference. Um, uh, Tomahawk came out on fire, uh, but it was just it was Lakeland that actually scored first, just two oh seven into the game. Uh, Gray Wagner. Uh, snuck behind the the Tomahawk defense in a, a pretty big lapse there and took a long lead pass from Cade Meyer and uh, walked in all alone. Uh, goalie Trevor Seliskar stopped it, uh, but Wagner was able to knock in his own rebound to take an early 1-0 lead. Uh, but then it was Tomahawk for, I think, the next three goals. Um, uh, they answered back at 6.59 on a power play goal. Uh, Jonah Dickens picked it up uh, up high and weaved his way around a, a couple players down low pulled them off to the side. He slid the puck across to Logan Seymour, uh, who put it past uh, Lakeland goalie Andrew Malston to, to tie it up. And then Tomahawk added another one in the, the waning seconds of the first period, one of those final minute of the period killer goals. Uh, they killed off a penalty their own, and uh, they got uh, an extra player on the ice uh, while Lakeland was waiting for a delayed penalty. Um, Austin Lamer uh, picked up the puck on on the point, and he barely stepped in and fired it just inside the post past uh, Molson's outstretched leg. And Austin Lamer was uh, a name Burglar and I saw all throughout the night. He was all over the place for Tomahawk. Uh, he's really, really good. Uh, uh, it didn't take long in the second period. Tomahawk uh, went up 3-1, to one, 128 into the period. Uh, Seymour uh, previously had the assist. Uh, picked the puck up down in the corner right in front of us. Made a nice pass out in front to Dickens, who one-timed it in to make it 3-1. to one. Uh, From there, Lakeland was able to battle back, but 
Uh, in the end, uh, Tomahawk took away the the four three win. Um, some takeaways: Lakeland looks a lot like uh, the Lakeland team of the last couple of years to me. Um, fundamentally, they're sound and they're quick, but they don't have a huge amount of punch offensively. Um, and uh, defensively, they're kind of playing a bend but don't break. Uh, Tomahawk is a whole other team than than I've seen from Tomahawk. Uh, when this group of seniors were freshmen, they were 0-19 uh, winless season. When they were sophomores, they won nine games. When they were juniors, they won 18 games. So that means this year uh, they should win 27 games, uh, which would take them uh, – I believe that would make them state champions at this point. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's where Tomahawk is looking for this year, but yeah, they look, they're looking really good led by Austin Lamer. Um, really, really fun game to watch. It was much more physical um, than most of the other, the games I've seen this season, uh, not chippy or, or cheap in any way, but it was a good physical game Two really, really well matched teams. Yeah, I, I was at that game too, and we got to talk to, and of course I'm horrible with names, but uh, last year's Tomahawk coach. Chris Bembinster. That's him, yes. Long-time coach. Yes, long-time coach. And he was telling us um, that, well, one of our, we have to first mention that Tomahawk is uh, the only uh, school that has hockey up there that is not part on the girls' side of the Northland Pines co-op. Um, uh, so Tomahawk, uh, girls in Tomahawk play on the boys' team. And we've mentioned her in the past, but we found out that uh, Scout Stromberg, uh, the girl on, a girl on the, on the, on the boys' team, is actually committed to Concordia to play hockey in, at Concordia down in Mequon uh, next year. So that, that was good to hear. Um, cause yeah, she's, she holds her own out there. I mean, she gets regular shifts on, on that team and, uh, she's not big compared to the, the other guys out there, but, but she does her job defensively. Oh, we all, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just segue smoothly here into, uh, that we also went to another game. Uh, not a game of the week, but we saw that uh, Hudson was going to be in town, in town, well, here be, in Wausau to play Wausau West. So we went there on Saturday and we watched the Hudson Raiders and Wausau West. And I'm not going to go through the whole uh, game thing because there's a, a story on on the, the site that does all of that. But it was the second time um, that I've gotten to see uh, Julian Scalcucci play play goal, and as as Bill uh, found on his conversation with with Brian Brandt that um, Brian, Wausau West has four goaltenders and they they kind of rotate them and it, like this is the second time I saw uh, Scalcucci in net and they were they were tough games. So the Chippewa Falls was the first one they lost four to two. So uh, and the thing is, of the six goals that I saw him give up, um, three of them were uh, defensive lapses by Wasa West, which is rare. But where there was a guy came in all alone uh, on Scalcucci, and each time they shot high glove side and scored, and it, it's, he's a freshman. He's not real big. And playing a little too deep in his crease gives him a gave, gave them a shot. As he gets more confidence, more experience, maybe a little bigger, you know, he'll come out and he will learn to come out and challenge those shooters and you know cut down those angles and not give them those opportunities to shoot. But uh, he looked really well, looked really good in the net. Uh, he moves well. He. You know, he he doesn't give up a whole lot of rebounds. When he does, the West defense clears it. Um, the other thing I noticed in the game, I was really – I thought that the, 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 the numbers on the backs of the West jerseys, the lettering, the, the font, it was, it was too thin. 
They, they, they had real skinny numbers. And I looked, when I was doing the pictures, I looked, and Hudson had really fat numbers, and they, they, they were the same. And it was, I don't, know if, I don't know how many font geeks there are out there, but it was the classic varsity font. The varsity font has an inner layer and an outer layer. It's, it's a two-layer font. And Hudson was wearing the outer layer, and Wasa West was wearing the inner layer. It's like, it's like they ordered, you know, outer layer white, inner layer navy blue. Hudson got the white. Wasa West got the blue. What West had really skinny numbers. Hudson had really fat numbers. Um, are you sure your eyes just aren't old? No, I I, I checked the picture. You there's a photo gallery out there. You look, you look, you you can find a picture that has the backs of both. And you can see how easily that Wausau West number would fit inside the Hudson number. It would make a, you know, a re really nice two two color uh, jersey number. And you know, some people have asked about Hudson this year not appearing in the top six, uh, which they've been a fixture of for the last I don't know six years or so. Um, they're every bit as good defensively as they were before. In my mind, they just don't have the offensive punch that they've had before. They're still looking for that that scorer to to. Oh, right, I, I their 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 leading scorer has eighteen points. Um, we've got teams where the leading scorer is in is in the forties. A lot of them are in the thirties. Uh, Hudson's leading scorer is eighteen. Second is seventeen, and then it drops down to twelve and ten. So. They don't score a lot of goals. They don't give up many goals, but they don't score a lot of goals either. And um, you need that. Anyway. But if you can uh, hold somebody to one or two goals, you have a good chance of winning. And they're in all of their games. Uh, a couple of their cross-border battles over in Minnesota haven't been great, but they've been in every game they've played in Wisconsin. All righty. Burglar, since you like to do, since you like to talk a lot tonight, why don't you tell us about our players of the week? I can do that. Our best Western Premier Park Hotel, uh, downtown Madison, players of the week from Antigo. Owen Dickman, a forward. On Tuesday, he had four goal, four of the five goals in a five to four win over Milton. On Thursday, he had three goals and an assist in a 5-3 to three win over Northland Pines. And on Saturday, he had three goals and two assists in a 6-1 to one, or a 6-4 to four win over Pacelli. So he factored in all but, well, yeah. You do quick math. Uh, 10 of the, uh, no, blah, blah, blah. blah. 13, he had 13 points out of the 16 goals that that Anigo scored uh, this this past week. So hats off to Owen Dickman of Anigo. Um, from <laughs> on the girls' side, a forward from Hayward, Reese Sheehan, had a goal and three assists in a five to one win over Chippewa Falls Menominee. On Thursday, then on Saturday, two goals and an assist in a five to three win over Arrowhead. So a couple of forwards, high scoring forwards, helping their teams to five victories this week in Owen Dickman and Reese Sheehan. Yeah, last year Park players of the week. Last year, Reese Reese Sheehan was part of a, a dynamic duo. Uh, Reese was the quick moving forward, while Riley Springer was the power forward. Uh, Riley, Riley has since graduated, and now Reese is kind of uh, not on her own, kind of offensively for Hayward. Um, she's got thirty-five points on the season. Their next closest forward has fourteen. Yeah, and I she, remember. I remember Riley Springer. She was a beast. And Reese is still got to be one of the quickest players on the ice out there. Watching her play, I got to watch her play uh, at the prep hockey holiday classic. Yeah. And like I said, and with, I think I said this after we had Antigo and uh, DC Everest as, as a game of the week, 
or well, the, I had to cover that during the holiday tournament. Um, the the leading the leading points guy in in the state right now is Eli Kastler of Vanigo. And Kastler and Dickman in the game I saw them play against uh, DC Everest, Kastler and Dickman were the best two players on the ice. Um, unfortunately for Anigo, the next 10 best players were all on DC Everest. Um, so, you know, they, <laughs> they they needed a little more help. It's, it's fair to say right now that the top three point leaders in the state are all from Anigo because uh, Jack McKenna from Arrowhead <laughs> is – uh, the, is from the McKenna family of Anago, although he does not live in Anago. Right, Mike Mike McKenna, son of Gino, our favorite beer distributor in Anago. So Owen Dickman, some nice numbers. That's kind of like Alex Nagel like. He is good. He, I, 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 like I said, I, it was fun watching those two kids play. And, you know, if they just had a little better supporting cast. But they're they're a very young team, and Dickman and Kassler, I think, are both juniors. So, you know, the youngsters will grow up a little bit more next year. Maybe they'll get some more help coming up. You know, maybe Anago can, uh, you know, be competitive again next year. Okay. Well, everybody's heard enough about what well, we talked about Tomahawk a little bit ago, and. Uh, Junior had the chance to see him and uh, talked about how good they are. Well, did they make the top six or did they not make the top six? Let's find out. Junior, All right. about our top sixes? Starting with Division Two, it actually changed this week after having been the same in the last three polls. Uh, Amory is still number one. Oregon moves up to number two. Uh, New Richmond falls to number three. Lakeland is fourth. River Falls is fifth. Uh, those two didn't change. And then Tomahawk slides into the sixth spot. Uh, also receiving votes for Division Two were McFarland, Monona Grove, Somerset, and St. Mary's Springs. Uh, for the girls, Superior is a unanimous number one. Uh, Central Wisconsin, St. Croix Valley, and Bay Area are still two, three, and four. Uh, Hayward moves up to fifth, and Hudson drops down to sixth. Uh, also receiving votes were University School and the Warbirds. And then in Division One, Spash is a unanimous number one. Chippewa Falls is second. Uh, Bayport and Brookfield flip flopped for the third poll in a row. This time, Bayport's third, Brookfield is fourth. Eau Claire Memorial moved up to fifth, and Madison Edgewood dropped to sixth. And then also receiving votes are Hudson and Notre Dame Academy. Guys, I don't get a chance to see uh, Spash during the season. Tell me a little bit about what makes Spash so good. They have really good players. Uh, they got are they deep? Are they are uh, they deep? They got great goaltending. I mean, what do they got? Uh, well, Mason Sperlin is sitting on a nine forty save percentage right now. Jackson Schroeder is in the top ten in points. He's got thirty seven. Grady Miller's got thirty. Grant Molsky's got twenty six. Um, so they're, they're putting it together right now. They're doing really well. Um, they beat Chippewa Falls five to three. They beat Bayport six to one. I mentioned on last week's show that, um, Devin Rusley, Bayport's goalie. That's the first time he's ever given up six goals in a high school hockey game. And he's played, you know, Notre Dame now 19 times, Notre Dame, St. Mary Springs, um, Nina Hortonville, Menasha. 19 times in his career. And that's the first time he's given up six goals in a game. Um, so that's, that's what Spash is bringing to the party. Well, and I, I've, I've not seen them play yet. I, I have to get to one of their games, but from what I understand, um, Grant Molsky is the goal scorer and Jackson Schrader is the guy who uh, sets everything up. Uh, he sees the whole ice. He anticipates um, he's the one that he, he's the, the straw that stirs the drink and Grant Molsky is the guy that usually hammers at home. Um, but yeah, apparently those two are their dynamic duo right now. And it's not unusual. Uh, I, I think, um, as long as we've been covering, uh, high school hockey, I think 
I think there's I think there's always been a Molsky on on Spash. It is a f- familiar name. Yeah. Yeah. But just looking at their their offense this year, MJ. Second game of the season, yes. 2-2 tie with Notre Dame. Fourth game of the season, 2-1 win over Bayport. Then they put five on Wausau West, five on Chippewa Falls, seven on New Richmond, six on Bayport. Uh, they just dropped seven on Wisconsin Rapids, who is, um, I think, turning some heads this year. They're playing a lot better than they had the last couple of years. So they're they're scoring consistently against a lot of top teams. I would say so. Burglar Jr., have either of you seen Bayport or Brookfield this year? I have not in person. You know, I've seen some of Bayport's live stream, but not a whole game all at once. Kids I, always in the way. I see that they're playing each other on Friday, and I, I think we had gotten an email from uh, someone uh, mentioning that game and offering to take some pictures and stuff at it. But uh, Matt Roadhouse. Yeah, uh, so what do you expect to see out of the the Bayport Brookfield game on Friday? Well, Brookfield, I I have no ex like they were they were a shock to me. Um, you know, if I was making a preseason top six, I don't know that I'd have had Brookfield on it, but they're certainly proving it this year. Whereas on the other hand, Bayport, they returned a good chunk of the names that were on the squad last year: Will Lyons. Uh, Nick Boss, uh, Devin Rusty's back. So, I mean, Bayport, we ex- I expected them to come into this season and be strong. Well, I, I expect I expect to you know settle that flip flopping back and forth between number three and number four. You know, just tell us which team is better. Um, that can happen. And then they'll be tied and go into mm-hmm. overtime and stay tied and you <laughs> really. <laughs> I mean, that would be the best thing that could happen for those two teams. Is they just keep flip-flopping between third and fourth, so obviously they need to play a tie. <clears throat> but they both, I mean, Augustus Jones for for Brookfield's got a, a 923. I think Devin Rusty was sitting on a, a 941 save percentage right now. 941 is crazy. Um, to be to have that many games under your belt at this point in the season to be sitting on a 941 is, 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 is great. Um, 923 is really good. Cooper Simon, uh, 40 points for Brookfield, Adam Sexton, 38. So they're getting scoring. Uh, it'll be, it'll be fun to see. And this, this, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to get down to, uh, I wouldn't mind getting down to Marathon Park this weekend. They have the the Wausau West Warriors do a a tournament uh, this time. And what do we have? Um, Wausau West and Middleton play on Friday. And Notre Dame and Oakland Memorial play on Friday. Um, and then, you know, Consolation and Championship on Saturday. But those are... Those are four big teams coming into Wausau uh, this weekend. But I'm stuck at home. Well, then my, on the, my well, wife, left, my wife left me again. <laughs> Went home to her mother. Same old, same old. You should you shouldn't say it like that. Someone might not understand that you're just saying she's up north to see her ailing mom. What? She left me to go home to her mother. Well, I, I, I guess she to go home to her mother's in a nursing home, so I guess that's not really true. She's she's staying with her sister, her sister, you know. Oh, one of those things. <laughs> staying with the sister until things smooth over, huh? That's it. Until I change my evil ways and, you know. Your evil <laughs> beggar, beggar to come back, bended knee, all that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, I'd like to see that. So, our upcoming week, games of the week, guys. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, this week, you know, after the tough loss that Central Wisconsin had against Superior 
and the Culver's Cup Championship, they actually re rebounded with two nice wins this week, uh, one at home and one on the road, where they both were four to two victories, one over the Fox City Stars, and the other one was over the Warbirds and stuff. And so, you know, that's I was just thinking them, that, neither of those teams is superior. Yeah. Go ahead, MJ. MJ, you're muted. I was trying to yell at the dog. Were you successful? No, she won't come in. Oh, okay. Well, I'll move us on to our upcoming games of the week. Yeah. Saturday, Burglar and I are staying home and going to Green Heck Turner Community Center to see Bay Area and the Central Wisconsin Storm. The rematch. It is a rematch. And then Saturday also, uh, Madison Edge will be heading to Oregon, a rink MJ is very familiar with. And MJ will be at that one. Yeah, I get to see my good buddy Larry Clemens at that game. Always oh, good when you run Always good when you run into Larry. I was I was at the we actually we had the Bay Area and Central Wisconsin as our game of the week uh before Christmas. And that one ended uh well in controversial style, as I like to say, where um a penalty was called on Bay Area for a defenseman, uh knocking a central Wisconsin forward on her ass. Uh, who had pitchfork their goalie. Um, and like I, I think we said it there, that doesn't usually happen. You, you either penalize the both players or you, you let it go. Um, they called a penalty only on the Bay Area defender, and a power play goal was scored uh, to end that game. So uh, I think Bay Area is going to be uh, fired up for this rematch. Uh, with Central Wisconsin, that's going to be at uh, the Green Heck Fieldhouse, which is what five minutes away from here. Nine, nine minutes. He drives it more often than I do because he has practice there. Um, but we'll go there. It's one of the places I can still set up my ladder and, you know, take pictures over the glass. I have been banned from doing that in Mosinee and now Lakeland. Um, they say it's uh, secure. It, it, it's it's a uh, insurance liability. Insurance liability, like you know, fat old man head over the glass, make it hit with a puck or a stick or something, and you know, they don't realize just how nimble and quick. I am. Okay. Especially when you got a puck that's being rung around the boards and coming right to you. Hey, I've been dodging pucks my whole life. I suppose yeah. I shouldn't say that since, since I used to be a goalie. <laughs> you were never a goalie. I know, but... Dodging pucks and goalie don't really go together, you know, so I thought it would be humorous. Maybe I was wrong. Yeah. Bob would say, what? <laughs> um, final thoughts. We'll be getting to about that point in the show, guys. Uh, uh, this is usually when Dell talks about the, uh, the uh, Hobie Baker. Baker. Yeah. Um. Well, there's the article up there now to, uh, to help remind everybody. But yeah, we'd like to see, we'd love to see every team in the state uh, nominate one of their seniors to receive the Hobie Baker Award. It'd be great to see 100% participation. Uh, besides that, I do have another final thought. And it's actually a question that Junior probably knows an answer to already. Uh, after finding out that the head coach for the Sabres uh, actually played college ho hockey for Boston College. I was curious, uh, how, anybody have any idea 
how many of our head coaches in both the boys and girls side played college hockey? I have no idea. Me too. I got nothing. I just thought it'd be it's kind of interesting um, and, and thought that it popped into my head. And sometimes, you know, I was talking to one of the coaches at the uh, Culver's Cup, and you know, we were discussing, you know, sometimes great players don't make great coaches, and it's the players that ha have to work the hardest uh, to get to where they got that are able to coach a little bit better and um, make the connection with the kids because they know what they're going through a little bit. But I think it all depends on the individual as, as to how good a coach they end up being. Yeah, Ted Williams yeah. was a terrible hitting coach. Yeah, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne Gretzky did not have an illustrious coaching career either. But yeah, uh, and then the other final th thought that I guess I'll throw out there is uh, Junior and I both sent out emails to the coaches on the boys and girls side, one reminding them about the top six votes, but the other thing was about the unsung hero nominations, trying to get more nominations for that uh, this year. And the um, remind the coaches when you do your top six votes, Junior set that up really nice where you're able to nominate your player of the week at the bottom of them. So, yeah, we're giving coaches a, a lot of time. Usually we wait till February before we start requesting solicit, you know, nominations for the the Rachel uh, Kenyon and Adam Burrish awards, but we decided to do it that first weekend in January this year just to give them more time to get them in. I can say that in the past, we used to get 12, 15 nominations for the Adam Burrish Award, Award, but for the last two couple post-COVID years, we've only really been getting like four or five, and we really want to get back up to that 12, 15-ish number. And plus, it's just a good award for some, some uh, kid to win, you know? I mean, Everybody knows about so the, you know... I mean, the, we've had, the goal and, scores and the goalies and that. And like Adam, Adam picks the award. The coaches submit the nominations. I compile them. I send them to Adam. He picks the award. I know he has contacted coaches after their name because I always conclude their email address. He contacts coaches. He learns more about the players. Uh, he puts a lot of time into it. Um, so it's not just a flippant thing. And, you know, he takes, I mean, last year, he, the unsung hero was a kid on Notre Dame, uh, which is saying something considering they went undefeated. But he deserved it. Uh, you know, a couple of years before that, we had a kid from East Merrill uh, win it. We had a kid from Chihuahua Ch Phillips win it. Uh, Pines has won it. You know, so they, it comes from from great teams. It comes from not great teams. It's if if that kid deserves it, if he is truly an unsung hero on your team, now is your time to sing him. You know what, Junior? I think I'm going to name you as the unsung hero of Wisconsin prep hockey. I don't know where I'd submit it to, but I nominate you. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, anything else? I'm really looking forward to this Edgewood, Oregon game. Um, Edgewood's goaltender who's very good, you know, gets the you know, Andrew Jakey gets to play against him. And Andrew Jakey, who can score, you know, interesting to see how many looks he gets at him. So I'm looking forward to seeing that game on Saturday. Well, we're looking forward to hearing your write-up about it. You Well, you don't hear a write-up. You read it, silly. No, I have, I have Google read it to me. <laughs> Old eyes. Siri? Siri, read MJ's uh, Game of the Week story. She'd probably come back and says, it makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that. 
All right. T take us home, MJ. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, it's always fun to talk with you guys. Next week, we'll uh, come back and we'll try to do better. So for Dell, we could go Berg, Scanlon, and Berg lawyers. Um, I'm Mike Hammett. We'll see you next Monday night. We'll get another edition cut of This Week in Wisconsin Prep Hockey.